Pierre Carl, tell me how, how you become a wrestling champion. It's not like hockey. It's not like baseball. It's not like boxing because you have to negotiate your, you know, your championship. It's not a. You don't only win it in the ring. You have to to, to go to Vince McMahon and ask for it, eh? Well, in the WWE, uh, it, it sounds funny, but I've played a lot of sport w while I was young. I played hockey. I played baseball. Uh, football, uh, soccer, name it. I played it. I, uh, I've been there. And um, wrestling, uh, everybody knows that uh, it's uh, predetermined who's, who's going to win the match. And of course, to become uh, a wrestling champion, um, a WWE wrestling champion, or any wrestling champion for any organization, you have to be able to. Uh, be able to uh, to deal, to be a businessman, to sell yourself as to the promoter as the image that you think or the person or the character that you think that you can be and perform and, and, and sell to Vince McMahon or to John Laurinaitis as, as a right harm uh, as far as the WWE or uh, back in the days Jim Ross or uh, a bunch of other guys that were surrounded by Vince but um, in my mind I always thought that I had to go straight to Vince without uh, uh, making the other ones not important it's, it's important to, to respect uh, hierarchy you know to, to respect the organigram and not to step down on anyone ahead to, to, to get to Vince. But um, in the years, um, late 80s, beginning of 90s, uh, Vince was uh, accessible more than he is now in the year 2010 and plus. Um, uh, we, we had the possibility to, to wait in line um, in front of his office and different arenas where we were taping for TV and um, it was always there yeah it was uh, always TV tapings and pay-per-views Vince always there for house shows uh, it would rarely uh, show up uh, unless it's a it's a huge uh, uh, house or something special a retirement or but wasn't there something with the Shawn Michaels um, because he wouldn't wait in line yeah, I've read in his autobiography that Sean uh, wanted to become one of the top guy, uh, top wrestler for for Vince, and and it's funny because I lived it a little bit, and uh, and just before I'm gonna go back to Sean, I'm gonna <laughs> tell you a little story. Uh, when I began in 1993 for Vince McMahon, I was with Jacques. Jacques uh, Rougeau was all was already been there for. Uh, for almost six, seven, eight years. I don't know how many years he was there with Raymond before I was there. So he had a good relationship with Vince. And I was telling Jacques, Jacques, every time I go to shake Vince's hand, he always turns his back to me. And, and, I, and I got so pissed off, you know, I was so annoyed with it because I'm telling Jacques, Vince doesn't want to talk to me. He treats me like shit. I don't know why, but every time, I see him coming down in, uh, in the aisle somewhere in the arena, I'm, I'm going towards him, he's going to turn his back, hey, uh, say hi to another wrestler, he's trying to avoid me all the time. And I realized that with the time that avoiding me was probably the best thing that he could do and probably the best thing that he can do with every other wrestler is because some, everybody wants something from him. Okay. So the longest time he can avoid you, uh, the better it is for him. But uh, so I tell I tell Jacques about me being, being so pissed off. So he tells Vince that I'm feeling like that. So uh, he's uh, he's right there. Jacques talking with Vince. I'm coming into the discuss discussion. I go, hey Vince, how are you? He turns his back. He's, hey Nikolai, <laughs> talking to Nikolai Volka, but it was all a setup with him and Jacques. So then after that, he turned around and said, oh, that's just a joke, buddy, man. Anytime you want to talk to me, you just grab me by the arm. Uh, don't worry, I will always be there for you. And uh, he gave me that, that, that talk, but uh, uh, 
anyway, it made it easier after that. But uh, so, anyways, uh, it, it kind of uh, got me closer to Vince after that that joke. And um, Sean was uh, was wondering how he could become uh, part of the top uh, five. Or you know, to me, like uh, I'm, I'm doing conferences, and I always talk about the law of Pareto. Wilfredo Pareto, which is a, uh, an economist from Italy, who invented the law that. Uh, there's always a, a core of excellence uh, that 20% of that core will always produce 80% of the result. So I knew fundamentally that I had to be part of that core of 20%. And in my conference, I always compare that to a, a lottery ticket. Well, you have six numbers that may come out out of 49 numbers. Uh, it's a little bit less than 20%, it might, been, it might have been 15% or, or a little bit less, but it, it, it's a good image for the, uh, for the as far as uh, the imaginary, you know, it, 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 it hits you like, uh, you, you can see right away the image. So uh, Sean, in his autobiography, was looking at Randy Rat Machoman Savage cutting in front of the, the line, because it was already, it was always a line that wanted to talk to Vince, and uh, sometimes we could wait an hour, an hour and a half to talk to Vince, so it was a long wait. I felt like we were at doctors, something waiting for something. And um, everybody was going into the office and asking, uh, what's going on with my career? Uh, am I going there? Do you have, what, what are the plans of the company for me? Blah, blah, blah. So, um, Sean, uh, by uh, watching Macho Man decided one day that he was cutting in front of the line and walked straight into Vince's office. Said, Vince, what what do I need to do to, to become one of your top wrestlers? And uh, Vince told him that uh, you just did it. So uh, what you had to do, you know, just cut in front of the line, show some confidence, and show that you have, a, uh, you know what you're worth of and that you can perform and you have the, uh, the audacity uh, to, to, to come into my office and ask, ask me that uh, you want to become somebody, you know, uh, important in the company. So um, that, that's how we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we dealt uh, the belts. Uh, we, didn't cut in front, we didn't cut in front of the line, but uh, we, uh, we had a lot of talks with Vince and uh, Eventually, uh, you know, we were asking him and we were telling him that, you know, the reactions of, we could feel the reactions of the crowd every time that we were walking into the aisle uh, with our song that we were, we were singing by ourselves, which was bad and people... So, so it doesn't matter if people like you or dislike you, it's not, you just have to, to make them react to you. That's it. Uh, as long as they love you, as long as they hate you, uh, as long as you're not in the middle. If, 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 if people don't care about you either side, uh, it doesn't mean you're, that you're not going anywhere, but it means that uh, you have to do something to, to sparkle, you know, something, you know, to get something moving so that you're going to be able to, to be creative, to... To, to do something because it's a vicious circle. If you don't have the push, you don't have the opportunity. If you don't have the opportunity, how can you become so excellent, so good? So somehow it has to start with the wrestler, I think. It's got to initiate, you know, sparkle. Do something that's gonna make uh, a little reaction, a potential uh, vision for Vince McMahon or his creative comedy to say, okay, we're, we're going to go this way with this guy because we saw something there. And then when you put something there, then you knock on the door of, now you can go to Vince because you're going to insult the other guys, so you're going step by step, but you have to be in the ears of the people that have um, power in the company. Mm -hmm. And you have also to be, to be corporate. To yeah, to, yeah, to, but to that's that's that, that's uh, that's what I mean by being corporate. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be smart. And S Steve Austin was was one of the, another guy who was real smart because he he got very friendly with 
the taping crew with the the guy that were uh, ending the cameras, the guys uh, that were doing the sound, and he, he got friendly with all of them because... So they would make him look good. They, they, they helped him out look good while he was in the ring, and that enhanced uh, the performance that he was doing. So that's what I'm talking about in my conferences. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's almost like politics in a way that... You know, uh, the better your leadership is as far as making good, um, solid human contact uh, with every individual in the company, uh, that they are, the, the crew that is, uh, you know, uh, holding the cameras, the, the, the tech, uh, uh, the, the creative comedy, the, um, the, the the guy who's doing your music, everybody has to to feel and know that they're important to you because the whole team makes you look good. And then finally, you can uh, walk up and and be able to sell yourself to Vince. And after that, you <laughs> you do sell yourself, but you have to deliver the performances. You became world champion uh, team with uh, teaming with Jacques Rougeau. Uh, how did it happen? Yeah, with Jacques, uh, like I said, it was so. Uh, as soon as we, we started, uh, I came in from you know I had a eight years background. I've been all over the world. I met Jacques in Puerto Rico. Um, But not in the WWF. Then. No, Jacques took a year of absence because uh, he's having his second son and he wanted to be there for his wife. And he was doing like independent contracts. Uh, and most of them were in Puerto Rico for Carlos Colon because it was only like a weekend away and it was a good payoff for him. Um, by the time that I met Jacques, I already been um, working for a huge huge organization like uh, Auto Vans in Germany uh, which uh, which was a, a big company and uh, also uh, worked for Brian Dixon over in England uh, which was another pretty big com company as far as uh, working seven days a week it was a good circuit and um, I've worked for another guy in Germany I've worked you know different uh, South Africa and uh, for us almost eight years I was uh, going all over the world and, and uh, ended up in Puerto Rico working for Carlos Colon and uh, someone told me that somebody from the WWF WWE now was coming uh, for a weekend for a big show and then um, it was Jacques, we were both from Quebec Montreal, Quebec, we never met uh, he was like my I had some Idols while I was young, the Old Warriors, Ricky Martel, the Rougeos, Dino Bravo, and uh, he was like your godfather in a way. <laughs> I, I, he was like a mentor to me. Yeah. I, I mean, because uh, he, he had more experience uh, than me with the WWF. Uh, took me under his wing. Uh, it helped me make the transition from. Uh, wrestling for a small organization to uh, the real big time show and um, it helped me a lot but I, because I became the world tag team champion with Jock uh, in less than three months after I was signed so it was quick for the wrestlers that were there and were seeing that um, it was like why him you know he just came here Why so quick? Why so this? It feel a lot of injustice, but I can tell you it was well deserved. I slept a lot in airports and floors. I've traveled, uh, cramped up, ate in the small cars, uh, like a, a station wagon, um, for for six, seven hours. Uh, I slept in rooms with three, four other people. You know, it was a hard way, uh, a tough life. To get there, and those 15 minutes of fame every night that you wrestle, that you feel totally like uh, in another world. You're having 
so much adrenaline you're living the moment you're you're the presence there you don't think about anything else except perform and, and do something great uh, which is one of my term also in my conferences and uh, it's uh, it was a uh, it was a lot of pain for that 15 minutes there it was a lot of pain before I got signed by the WWF at the time but um, the night that we won the belts uh, was September 13th in Manhattan Center New York uh, and Monday Night Raw live and uh, we kind of got the news from Kurt Inning Mr. Perfect at a restaurant in the afternoon saying that uh, you guys are getting the belts uh, tonight or something like that and then um, we showed up to the arena and then uh, Vince called us in a meeting and then was telling us that we were getting the straps um, that same night against the Steiner brothers and um, for someone who played every sports being younger uh, I can tell you that the feeling of winning a belt a uh, championship match championship belts um, is the same feeling that winning any other championship that are real um, you, as you getting the belt as a gift for all the commitments that you have done Sacrifice. all the sacrifices yeah. that you have done all the the dues that you have paid uh, it's 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 worth uh, any other uh, so, so it's not only a, like it's not only sports because you have to negotiate it. It's like it's like in hockey if you have to negotiate to get on the on the power play or, or stuff like that. It, it's all that. It's not only it's not only a sport issue. Yeah, it's, it's uh, politics. Uh, it's a uh, it's a very it's very business in a way that uh, for a hockey player uh, you, you can't think that you only have to play hockey and you have to be good at playing hockey to become a good hockey player because you have to. To be able able to, uh, to to sell yourself to the coach or to the general manager to to, to tell him uh, you know uh, what your uh, your assets are and why you should be there and why you, you must maybe deserve an opportunity to do something and to show up what you have you know and and it's the same thing with wrestling you know sometimes if, if if i was a hockey player and i would want to play on the on the the power play or the penalty killing on the box the kill pe penalty or whatever the the position that i wanted to be in um i think the reference with the hockey could be with baseball and wrestling is the same because if the coach gives you only one chance to be on the power play and you don't score and you don't do that good uh, it's hard for you to do justice mm. uh, but if he gives you like uh, many shifts or many games and you have that sometimes to build a momentum and, and to build that confidence and to to build that, 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 that uh, the confidence that you need to, to show them that you are able to do what you told them that you can do uh, it's the same thing with wrestling if they give you one match uh, and you don't perform as what they expect you have at least you have at least you know you know that you have to be able to show a little bit of something so that uh, they have in mind that okay we saw something there and maybe he can give us more if we give him a good chance but it's a vicious circle. You have to to be able to do a lot in a little amount of time, and and they have to see something, and then and then you have to negotiate your position there, and you have to negotiate the time frame that you know that you might need to get over. To, what I mean to get over to to be able to to show that you're worthwhile what you're saying that you are. So you have to negotiate your uh, your championship. But you have to play within the within the rules, because once you wanted to become to become the solo world champ. So we're gonna see in another video how it happened and what what happened. Yeah. <laughs>